So this is an evening like few others. India has created history by becoming the first nation in the world to soft land on the southern pole of the moon. Four years after the Chandrayaan-2 mission did not succeed, the ISRO scientists had made it their mission and have now succeeded in making the nation proud. Overcoming the odds, it has achieved this momentous feat. The Vikram lander of India's Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission achieved a safe soft landing on the southern pole of the moon in Vyond's Siddharth MP gets you more on this historic moment. So we are nearly at zero velocity, vertical and horizontal. We, are, we were hovering and now we are approaching the moon's surface. India has landed on the moon. Lander model puri tarah se safely or softly chandrama ke sata pe land ho chuka hai. A historic moment. The world watched with bated breath as India's space agency ISRO achieved what many thought was impossible. Let us all wait to hear from the Secretary Department of Space and Chairman ISRO, Sri S. Somnath. We have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. In those nail-biting 19 minutes of terror, Vikram slowly and steadily inched towards the lunar surface. धीरे धीरे लैंडर की वेगबान को कम किया जा रहा है और हम अब लगभग 50 मीटर से भी कम आ चुके हैं। Not just Indians, as live images from ISRO were telecast, the world kept its fingers crossed. This was the most critical phase of the landing. Learning from the earlier Chandrayaan-2 mission, ISRO took every precaution, made every calculation taking into account all anomalies. Working on a frugal budget, India's space scientists successfully landed their craft on the lunar surface. 1.4 billion hearts are swelling with pride and you know just about 20,000 persons working at ISRO have made it possible. That's the power of science, that's the power of knowledge. With what they've done, they've made so many people happy, they've made so many people ecstatic. And then now here we are, feather-like textbook soft landing accomplished. So that shows the confidence they had, that shows the homework they've done, and that shows that one failure is enough to learn adequate lessons. Leading the congratulatory messages pouring in was that of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who tracked the historic moment from Johannesburg. He is there for the BRIC summit. <laughs> ऐसा इतिहास बनते हुए देखते हैं तो जीवन धन्य हो जाता है ये पल अविस्मरणीय है ये क्षण अभूतपूर्व है ये क्षण विकसित भारत के संखनाद का है ये क्षण the moon landing is not just a success for India. It paves the way for future landings on the moon and other planetary explorations. India's successful moon mission is not just India's alone. This success belongs to all of humanity. India has now become the first nation to land a craft near the moon's south pole. A historic triumph for the world's most populous nation and its ambitious cut price space program. With prayers answered and a billion hearts swelling with pride, for ISRO, the journey has just begun. With Siddharth MP, Bureau Report, Vyond, World is One. And also joining us in the broadcast, we have with us Siddharth MP. He's joining us live from the ISRO headquarters in Bengaluru. He's been tracking the story all through the day and for the last several weeks, ever since Chandrayaan-3 mission, in fact, took off. Siddharth, this is a momentous occasion. This occasion belongs to the scientists of India. It's a generation of scientists who worked so hard for this moment and they've succeeded this, e this evening in soft landing on the southern pole of the moon. Give us a sense of what the scientists are telling you there. 
So every scientist we spoke to, we spoke to several center directors of ISRO. Of course, ISRO is not just one unitary block. ISRO is actually one organization with multiple sub-centers or branches divided across the country. So while what we see is just the rocket lifting off and the spacecraft landing, there are about a, a few dozens of departments that work on it. There are people who design the engines. There are people who design the communication systems. There are people who design the electronics. Each and every one of them is swelling with pride and they're happy about the teamwork. Let's tell you, Mohammed, uh, that uh, when you start off on a mission like this, it is important that every single system among thousands of them have to work flawlessly to execute it. So you can't say that one of them failed, let, let's okay, uh, it's okay, let's, you know, uh, depend on something else. Every one of them has to perform flawlessly because in space there is no margin for error. If you do make an error, it is catastrophic. That's how all space missions have been, even beat the most experienced nations, even beat the nations with the maximum budget. If you do a space mission, if there is one mistake, your entire mission is jeopardized. But here, what we have to remember is that the four-year effort, the four-year penance has come to fruition. And uh, this is going to motivate them to do more for the country. Remember, let's also talk about this brain drain aspect that is often spoken mm -hmm. about. But these are the scientists that chose to stay back in India. Of course, they would have got opportunities given their intelligence, given their brain and brawn. They right. would have got the opportunities to serve a foreign nation. But they all chose to stay back in India. They chose to serve their motherland. Of course, it is a well-known fact that uh, ISRO scientists, it is well established and known worldwide that ISRO scientists are not paid as compared to their global counterparts. This is purely because right. of the value of the Indian currency and of course the uh, you know various economic factors of different nations. Absolutely. But despite all this, they chose to stay back here. They chose to serve the country and they've done the country proud. So you, we can just only imagine how proud they should feel for all the hard work that they've done. In fact, at one point of time, Israel's chairman himself had said that, um, you know, if uh, Indian youth are after money and, uh, you know, fame and popularity, what they can do is they can start their own private space startups in India and they can make their money. That's I think, I think that's, an that's opportunity absolutely to do business true, Siddharth, because from because 2020 onwards, space start Startups yeah, can do anything they want. Every individual across India was in fact rooting for the scientists. Every heartbeat was for them. Now, Siddharth, I also want you to in fact weigh in on what happens next. Because when the Vikram lander in fact touched down on the surface of the moon, it kicked up a huge dust cloud. And that dust cloud needs to settle down before the Pragyan rover rolls out of the Vikram lander. Tell us what is expected to happen then. Yes, Mohamed. So as we speak, I'm sure the cameras of the Vikram lunar lander are active. They are closely monitoring these cameras all over the Vikram lander. They're monitoring the dust cloud that is around the lander. The reason why this dust cloud is kicked up is because you see a helicopter landing. You see a huge uh, tornado sort of dust cloud that, you know, swirls around uh, the helicopter, right? On Earth, this happens. On the moon as well, there's fine dust, talcum powder-like dust. So when the rover lands, its engines of, I mean, the lander lands, its engines are fired, so it's displacing a lot of dust. But once this dust storm kicks up, it should, you know, ideally settle down in uh, just a few moments. That's what happens on Earth. But why on the moon it takes time is because the gravity on the moon is weak. It's just one-sixth of that of the Earth. So because of that, it takes time. It takes a couple of hours, certainly. And at that time, also testing will be carried out of the various lander systems because, you know, after a soft landing, the most crucial thing and the next step will be to test communications, to test uh, each and every one of the equipment, to ensure the batteries are charged, to ensure the solar panels are deployed. And then, of course, then right. the science begins. Then the ramp is opened from the belly of the Vikram lander, the Pragyan rover emerges. And then, of course, on the tracks of the moon, there will be India's national emblem, the Ashoka Sarnath lines. And of course, there will also be the ISRO logo imprinted on the moon. And the beauty about imprinting something on the moon is that there is no wind, there is no water. You know, there are no uh, phenomenon that will change the imprints. That's why craters remain in the thousands on the moon. On Earth, there are hardly any craters. They, you know, uh, get weathered and vegetation grows, water flows. But on the moon, an imprint that you keep there will remain forever. That's the beauty uh, and that's what lay ahead, uh, Mohamed. Absolutely indeed, Siddhan. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and getting us all those details there from Bengaluru. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.